95% of your trading psychology problems can be broken down into these three things. We're going to break them down and show you how they relate to these top 20 to 30 problems that I have here written down and how you can solve them with these three easy steps. On top of that, I'm also going to use my friend here, Mr. ChatGPT, if you guys haven't heard of him. And we're going to just compare the answers out there to see what the best idea out there on the internet about how to counter, say, fear of missing out or dealing with losing streaks. I have been trading for over eight years and helped many people become consistently profitable traders. I have heard every story in the book of why you're getting into trading, why you're struggling with trading, everything. Like, I could you not, I'm going to sit back, have some tea, just ramble on a conversation and talk to you guys because honestly, I think trading psychology is one of the most overrated things out there. And I think a lot of people say, oh, it's 90% of the reasons why you don't make money. We're men here. This isn't a place where we need to be getting emotional, sharing each other's feelings, all right? We get over it, we come up with the plan and we execute, all right? We are critical thinkers here. I'm going to share my experience over the last eight years. So let's get into it. Now, I did ask a lot of people on social media, hey, what are the top things that you guys have problems with? So I have a list here about what we can talk about and then we're gonna compare it to chat GBT and kind of come up with a final thing. But you're going to notice 95% of trading psychology is going to be solved with these three things. Number one, it's going to be a trading plan. Number two, back testing. And number three, a trading journal and a proper review process. Those are the main three cores and we could break each say core into three separate sections and you're going to notice that we keep coming back to these and I'll say, hey, this is how you get over this problem. So hey, let's get into it. Now, this is one thing I wanted to quickly talk about. People say all the time, you got to become a non-emotional trader. I get it. Yes, we want to become a non-emotional trader and we want to leave our emotions at the door. But hey, we are human beings. We make mistakes. I make mistakes after eight years of trading. I know friends that have been doing this for 30 years. They continue to make trading mistakes based off of their emotions. You can't get rid of it completely, but what you can do is you can manage them. And that's one of the main things that separates the profitable traders and the losing traders is the profitable traders are able to manage their emotions better. JB, how, do, how can I control my emotions when trading? Well, when somebody comes to me, instead of just saying, do this, when I'm going to talk to you guys like I'm having a conversation, okay? When somebody comes to me and they're like, hey, I'm having a problem with my emotions when I'm trading. Okay, how can I minimize the chances of me making an emotional decision? Because this is a very big question here. How do I minimize the chances of me making an emotional decision? Well, the chances of you, you can minimize the chances of you making an emotional decision by having a very mechanical way top-down analysis of how you trade. You require, say, like this is why I always say in my, in my videos, having a trading plan, a step-by-step top-down analysis and having rules to your trading because when you have rules to your trading, you can't break them, right? It's it's 100%, this is the definition of an uptrend. This is the definition of a downtrend. You flip to a back of a science textbook. You recall this in high school, you flip to the back of your science textbook and it would say, what's an atom? I don't know what an atom is, but it would tell you what an atom is. It's molecules mixed together, hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen. I, I don't know, okay? I don't know what an atom is. I couldn't tell you a, a, a scientific definition. I couldn't tell you, but it tells you a scientific definition and you can't skew away from what an atom is. All right, so how can we minimize the chances of us making an emotional decision when it comes to trading? Well, we can have, there's a couple things. Number one, trading plan. Number two, you are going to make your trading very rules-based. You need prices to be inside higher time frame um, supply zone or demand zone. Okay, you need the stochastics, RSI, Bollinger Band oversold in order to be looking for selling opportunities. You need prices below the 200 moving average and then you go down to a smaller time frame and then you wait for, say, a bearish engulfing pattern or some type of bearish price action. All right. That's how you have a very mechanical way of trading. And you need this, 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 this. You need these five, six things in order for you to take a trade. And then what you should have is five to six trade examples in your trading plan to say this is what a very good 
sell setup looks like and vice versa. This is what a very good buy setup looks like in your trading plan. And then each time you take a trade, you should look at your trading plan and then you should be like, hey, does this trade that I'm about to take actually line up with this trading plan? You know what I mean? So that's what I recommend. Now, also, another thing is back testing. Now, back testing, you can do a quick back test over the course of say 100 trades over the course of one to two days, it will take you, okay? If you're fast, you you stay disciplined, you sit there on the computer, it'll take you uh, one to two days to get 100 trades, okay? Uh, to get 100 live trades, it might take you two to three months. Well, you just save yourself two to three months by doing a quick back test, and you can see whether or not the trading strategy is profitable, or maybe you might need to change something in your trading plan or your back test to make it profitable or to make it more profitable. Or maybe you want to see if something is worth testing out. So before you do it in the live markets, you do it in the back testing markets. And then you can see, okay, statistically over the last five years, I have made money with this and it's done very well. Okay, maybe I want to put this into the live session. All right. So that's also because this is going to get into a big example. Let's just say, for example, my haunted house analogy. I know people love my haunted house analogy. All right. You have a haunted house. You have, say... Okay, well, yeah, you have a haunted house. Haunted house, you have me and you have you, okay? I personally, this is me on the right. We're going to go MB. I believe in ghosts. I've never been in that in that uh, house, but people have said it's haunted, and I personally believe in ghosts. Now, have I ever seen a ghost? No, but I just believe in ghosts. You, on the other side, you don't believe in ghosts and you want to go into the haunted house. I say, I ain't going into the haunted house, but you can go into the haunted house. Okay, you go into the haunted house. Five minutes later, you come running out of the haunted house and you come back to me. And I'm like, what happened? And you're like, I saw a ghost. And then you actually saw a ghost. Okay, your belief system from there on out is going to be way different even from mine. You are going to re reinsure my belief that there is a ghost in that haunted house and that their ghosts are real versus you you actually saw a ghost you have a completely different belief system even though five minutes ago you didn't believe in ghosts all right that just got switched on a dime so that is why back testing is also very important now how to make i guess that's we're getting into a topic of how to make a better trading plan now but controlling your emotions I think I covered everything that I need to cover there. Uh, mechanical trading, having a trading plan, back testing, and then journaling. Journaling. Why do you journal? Well, because journaling is going to help you become a better trader because then you review and you see, hey, what's working? What is not working in my trading plan? You know what I mean? Maybe I need to change something. What happens if I instead go for a three to one versus two to one? What happens if I add this indicator versus that indicator? Okay, that's all stuff you can add if you journaled your trades. All right, so JB, I think that answered your question. We're not going to spend that much time on everybody else, I can tell you that. But like I said, most things are going to be trading plan, mechanical-based trading, back testing, journaling your, journaling your trades and reviewing your trades, right? Creating a trading strategy that's best for you. Maybe you're somebody that's not, that doesn't have a, uh, how should I say this? Maybe you're somebody that likes to have a high winning trading percentage but you're going to have a smaller return on investment, an R&R, &R, right? Maybe you're somebody that doesn't mind having a small win percentage, like a 30% or 20%, but you make four, five, six to one on your trades. Everybody's different, okay? You gotta figure out what works best for you. There is no best trading strategy. Okay, so I wanted to quickly compare to chat GBT, what people were saying here. Uh, develop a trading plan. We just talked about that. Using a stop loss order, uh, I wouldn't really say that helps too much. I mean, we're going to get into a side conversation about that. Take breaks. I mean, yeah, taking breaks is always good. But uh, And then we go on. Practice mindfulness. Whatever. I don't care about that. Manage your risk. Okay. Keeping a trading journal will help you identify patterns. Okay. Remember that emotions are just a natural part of trading and it is possible to completely eliminate them. However, by developing a solid trading plan, managing risk, and using strategies to manage your emotions you can improve your chances of being a successful trader there it is all right that's what we kind of talked about at the start let's move to the next one jb we're going to move past this but we're going to talk about this really quickly the first guy I ever taught how to trade 
he told me this joke and he asked me, what does FOMO mean? And I said, fear of missing out. And he says, no, it means fisting other men online. And so ever since he told me that joke, every time I see somebody say FOMO, I always think about fisting other men online. <laughs> Anyways, joke. This is a Twitter question from somebody. Letting a green trade turn red. I mean, man, this is just part of trading. You're going to always have winning trades and losing trades. You, you seriously can't get upset by letting a trade go from green to red. Now, if you're somebody that, you know, if you're getting upset by a one-to-one -one trade going against you, okay, you should probably lower the risk. But if you're, you know, I could see how it pissed me off as well if I have, say, the one, like a six-to-one take profit and I don't move my stop to break even and it's gone three-to-one or four-to-one and then it reverses and stops me out. Like, oh, yeah, that would piss me off too completely, right? But you really can't get upset by that because, dude, if you're getting upset by, say, if you're going for just a two-to-one and it goes one-to-one -one and it reverses and stops you out, you're risking too much. You have too much emotional capital at risk, okay? So you got to lower that risk, whether it's emotional capital or, I mean, yeah, that's really what it is. I mean, it's 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 not a percentage. It's, it's an emotional capital. It's like me. If I lose, I don't know, $500 on a trade, I don't really care. But if I start losing like a 1000 I'm like, ugh. You know, at least two, three trades of that. It's like, oh my God, like there goes my living expenses for like a month, right? Versus it, somebody might lose uh, $200. I might lose $100. I'm like, whatever. I think like, I don't care, right? That means nothing to me, but that $100 might mean a lot to somebody else. So there's different levels to this. And I'm sure I'm very low on some other traders that are at a completely different level than me which there's just levels to this. It's the same thing. People that make 50,000 a year, there are some people that are making $5,000 a year, you know? And then there's people making 100, then there's people making a, a million, and then there's people making 25 million and 100 million. There's billionaires, right? There's, there's different levels to this. It goes in every industry. So yeah, you, you really can't get upset. You're, you're probably risking too much. Okay, number two, holding trades past your stop. Dude, stop being stupid. I don't know a single profitable trader that doesn't use a stop loss. And you might be thinking, oh, that's that's pretty aggressive. Guys, I don't know a profitable trader that doesn't use a stop loss. Everybody uses a stop loss, okay? When it comes to like actively day trading, okay? If you're in like a long-term, very long-term position, okay, I understand. Like you're having a fundamental bias. I totally understand that. Right. But if you're going in and out of a position that can get out of hand very quickly if you're in the long term game. And I mean, like you want to do day trading for many years to come sooner or later, it's going to bite you in the bum and you're going to lose a lot. All right. I see it all the time. People reach out to me and they're like, I just turned my five hundred dollar account into five thousand. I'm like, great. I'm thinking in my head, you're going to lose it in probably a couple of weeks. I say, hey. Um, make sure you're using a stop because you're probably going to lose it. I've had many conversations like this and they always come back to me and they say they lost it. And I, I, I don't follow up with them. Sometimes I do, but I ask them, keep me updated on this. And then usually they don't message me, but if they do, or if I follow up on them, they say they lost the account. Why? Because they didn't use a stop loss. All right. But proper risk management is so important when it comes to the trading world. Okay. Just. Oh my gosh, guys. The amount of people that don't use stop loss, it's seriously mind blowing. And the people that sit there and risk 50% per trade or 20% per trade, it's unreal. Like there is a stupid amount of people out there in this trading world and it's absolutely mind blowing. All right. So stop doing that and start making sure that you have a stop loss. All right. Trying to fight the trend. Did stop trading counter trend just stop trading oh i can't stop trading it guy just come on man just stop doing it how freaking hard is it it's like let's say this if i told you don't go down this street outside my apartment building past 10 o'clock there's a 90 percent chance that you're going to get robbed and i say do not go there and then later that week you come back to me you said i went down that street you told me not to go down and i got robbed 
And I said, you're an idiot. All right. And then the next week you do the exact same thing. Like, did you not learn your lesson? Okay. Like each time, if you're losing money going against the trend, stop trading the trend. Like it's, <laughs> dude, the, the stuff I hear, and I'm not trying to target this person. I don't even know who sent me this, but stop trading the trend against the trend, right? Stop doing it. If you notice 80% of your losing trades are coming from trading against the trend, stop trading against the trend. All right. <laughs> it's it's common sense, guys. Like this is why I'm saying a lot of this trading psychology stuff is just it's after some time you just know how to manage it and you just know it's it's all BS out there. It really is, guys. We, we got to suck it up and just be a man and make plays. All right, that's just what the name of the game is. Having a trading plan, proper risk management, having a predetermined stop loss, exit plan if you want an exit plan to manage your emotions. Back testing, journaling, reviewing. That's just what it is. You understand, hey, I have a 70% win rate. There's a chance I'm going to lose four or five trades in a row. If you can't accept it, you need to change something in your trading plan or get out of the game. If you're like, oh, I don't want to lose six trades in a row. Well, then something in your trading strategy has got to change to where you review your trading your trading your trades that you've taken, you review to see how you can get better or you back test or you ask for a smaller return in the, in the markets. Instead of going for a two to one, go for a 1.5 to one. Like it's, it's common sense. Anyways. Okay. Let's continue. Uh, this is a question from Instagram from Mr. Drippin. How do I detach how, how do you detach yourself from making money and focusing on the trading strategy and discipline? Having multiple streams of income, I will say this, definitely helps a lot because if you rely completely off of trading income, it will be very stressful. And I did that for two years. It is stressful because you have a bad month or bad two months. You know, you put yourself in a hole of, okay, now you got to take money out. You got to pull money out of the closet from where you kept the money for saving it for a rainy day or whatever. So I get it. It can be very stressful. That's why having multiple sources of income is important. That way, if you don't take a trade for a while, it doesn't bother you. But also, if you go into a drawdown, it doesn't bother you. But you lose a trade, it doesn't bother you. How do I detach yourself from making money and focusing? It, it, it really is a... Okay, this is... Well, obviously, if you're attached to the money, this is why I will say do very small risk for 30 days. And I, I say a 30-day challenge. Small risk for 30 days at least. Risk five to ten dollars per trade. You know what I mean? The worst case scenario over the course of a month to two months, you lose one hundred to two hundred dollars. Okay. If you don't have a hundred to two hundred dollars to lose, then you probably shouldn't be in this game of the trading realm right now. You should be focusing on making money. Okay. That is going to at least put you in the mindset of emotional trading, open yourself up. To making emotional decisions because it's that real money at risk and this is why i say don't trade a demo trade a live account because demo you'll just trade it whatever uh you'll be reckless but then live trading you'll have emotions which is what real trading is this is why you should trade with real capital doesn't matter if it's five or ten dollars per trade because you lose you're like okay that's my groceries for the day that's my pizza a pizza slice for the day right so start small and you'll slowly build it Okay, how to not overtrade? Stop overtrading. <laughs> like, give yourself three trades. Three trades. You should look honestly. First off, normally these types of traders that overtrade, they they overtrade because they are upset because they're losing positions. They lost their first two three trades, so they double down on the next one, then the next one, the next one, right? And they put themselves into a hole. Give yourself. I don't want to even say give yourself a minimum trade because that's a horrible thing to say because if there's no trading setups, you shouldn't be trading. I, this is this is the conversation I want to have with you. If you go to certain funding challenges websites, some of them will offer a leaderboard and they will showcase a leaderboard of the top percentage returners for the month. 
And now obviously the top percentage returners for the month trading a funded account, you know, they're going to be 30%, 50% returns. Now you actually take the average of the people that are consistently making money, they're making anywhere from two and a half to 5% per month. That's just over the course of six months, that is the average return. Now, obviously you're going to have, you know, a guy that pops off and just makes 30, 40%. So you can't look at those guys, right? But you look at what the average is and it's two to 5%. And these guys are managing, are managing hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? You've got to have realistic expectations. Okay, these guys are not taking 20 trades a day. They might be taking a week, I would say on the low end, three, on the high end, 12 a week. Okay, have a proper, you should, you should deviate up your trades, deviate up your trades, look at your trading journal, your, your trades, and figure out what setups are making me money and not making me money. Remove the things that are costing you money and focus on your A quality trade setups then have a trading plan five trades like we talked about at the start of the meet at the start of this video have five trades of what a good buy setup is what a good sell setup is and then only make sure that when you take a trade it looks exactly like that okay and then if you notice you are losing if you get upset after two losing trades stop trading after two losing trades like there's traders i know like if they lose two losing trades they start freaking out. So what do we do? We put a cap on it. Like if you can't control yourself to step away from the markets, guys, you have a problem. All right. You have a, you have a problem. It's like, you ever have a friend that has a drinking problem. They're not fun to be around, right? They're not fun. It's if they have a gambling problem, they're always like, Ooh, I need to gamble. I need to, they're not fun to be around, right? Same thing. If you have a trading problem, you're not fun to be around. Nobody wants to talk to people like that. All right. Remain consistent. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, if you want, how to not over trade. I mean, we can put this into the how to not over trade. I don't know if this is this is a common problem for day traders, especially for those that are just starting out. Developing a trading plan. There it is again. Set real <laughs> set realistic goals. Use a trading journal, guys. You notice how everything comes back to this, all right? This is why I really don't have problems with it. Sure, I do have some, like sometimes. Um, more of it, I, I should also talk about some stuff, but what my biggest problems were, but this isn't about me. Uh, but I'll try to think about it later at the end. We might get into it. Have a stop loss, take breaks. Dude, we talked about this, all right. Uh, having a trading plan, we talked about that, all right? Using a trading journal, all right? When I say trading journal, like I personally don't mean like write it out like, oh, oh diary, oh diary, oh, I woke up today at 6.30 with the sun shining on my face, the dog licking my bum over top of the covers. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't care. I have one pillow lodged up my bum. Yeah, I don't care. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just where you document your trades, all right? All right, let's continue. Uh, taking breaks, okay. Overall, avoiding over trading requires discipline, patience, and a well-defined trading plan by staying focused. I mean, guys, like all your problems could be answered with chat GBT. I mean, what would happen if we say, no, because I know it's not going to. No, that'd be stupid. I don't even want to open up that conversation. All right, let's move to the next one. My, okay, this is a good one. Mr. Leon, my trading strategy was profitable. For, I'm overheating now because I'm getting angry. Hold on. <sighs> okay. Leon goes on to say, my trading strategy was profitable for six months now. And now I lose almost every trade and I have not changed anything. Okay, this is a really good one. This is going to go into the category of reviewing your trades and making sure that you journaled your trades. Because if you journaled your trades, you can now review to see what is making you money and what is costing you money. Also, this is something that I would look to do because you need to re you need to review to see where your trading strategy stopped making money because the markets are always changing. 
There, you always need to adapt. This is why I always say you need to continue to back test and come up with new ideas. We're always evolving. I don't trade the same way as I did two years ago. I don't trade the same way I did five years ago. I don't trade the same as I did a year and a half ago. We're always evolving, okay? We're humans, all right? Hundreds of millions of years, we were just little tadpoles. I mean, I'm sure hundreds and hundreds of millions of years, we were just little tadpoles swimming, right? And then what? we grow fins and then we start crawling and then we start getting out of the ocean. You know what I mean? It's that evolution of human beings. We always adapt, all right? We need to adapt to where we are in our current life situation. If we notice that we're not making money, it's the same thing with our trading strategy, right? So if we're not making money, we need to adapt because the markets are always changing. Different volatility, markets completely change. So it's important for us to change as well. Okay, so this is why if you journaled your trades, you can review to see what's going wrong. You can also review to say, hey, what is the market condition of the last six months versus say uh, six months prior? Because if you recall, this this past year has been a pretty bearish month, sideways to bearish month. Sorry, not month, but year. The last 20 years have been bullish trends. You know what I mean? So if we actually go to like just like the Dow Jones, US, let's just go US 30. What you can actually do is line up and say like, hey, where are your drawdowns happening and where are your, let me go like this. This is something that I did. And you know, you can notice, okay, very bullish. Like, do you have a drawdown when this is happening here? Like here in this time, did you have a drawdown? Did you have a drawdown in this period? What happened during this period? What happened during this period? What happened during this period? What's happening during these periods? You know, I'm just saying, review to see, okay, my, a drawdown of 2% to 8% happened here on these days. Okay, now go look at the stock market or the dollar market and look at the markets to see, what was happening during that time, okay? Maybe you also wanna consider the VIX chart, right? Nor Some people, their trading strategy really underperforms when shooting high with volatility, right? And in fact, it's right here. Like my personal trading dips a bit when I have high spikes of volatility, right? And so usually when this, okay, that's not, that's a different side note. But a lot of trading strategies, uh, when I was, reviewing mine from two years ago, I was noticing that a lot of my drawdowns were happening during the high times of volatility, all right? Maybe I wanna change my trading strategy because of that, all right? So that's something that you gotta do. And actually let's Google paste that. My trading strategy for, let's chat GBT it. Uh, okay, so we're asking chat GBT my trading strategy for the last six months as lost every trade. Okay, whatever. We know what the question is. Okay, if you have been using the same trading strategy consistently over the last six months and have found suddenly started experience losses, there could be several several factors into play. Here are some of the potential reasons. Okay, Mark, market conditions. They change rapidly. Okay, next, overfitting. Overfitting occurs, I don't even know what that means. In trading terms, I don't know. Overfitting occurs when a trading strategy is, oh, okay overly optimized for past market conditions okay uh, emotional trading you could be mo making emotional trading decisions trading psychology could be playing a performance in that uh, in my opinion i think it's number one and number two in order to identify the cause of the loss it's important that you conduct a thorough review of your trading performance how do you conduct a thorough review in your trading performance boom you journal your trades boom there you go that's why journaling your trades is important. Let's move to the next one. How many trades do people usually take or hold per day and how to avoid over trading? Okay, this is a Twitter poll I thought I asked. I know I asked people, but I realized it was this question. I said, how many markets do you trade? Because some people are a fan of like one to three, while some people are a fan of looking at a lot. There's different pros and cons to them. I remember I did ask this poll, but without scrolling for 20 minutes and finding it. A month, people are averaging 15 to 30 trades a month. That's where I think 68, I think there's like 65% of the people were having the amount of trades. And then like 40% or 30% had less than 
I think 15 a month. Okay. That's totally fine. There's pros and cons. I know people that have gone from day trading to swing trading. They've done much better. I know people that have gone from swing trading to day trading. They've done better, right? Figure out what works for you. Think about it like this. Usually I ask this, this conversation, this question to people, and it kind of opens their eyes up. And I say, well, what's a return that you would want realistically? And they say, realistically, consistently, 5%. I say, okay, great. How many trades do you think that will, that will really take? And they're like, I don't know, let's just say like maybe 10 to 20. I said, okay, fine. There are traders out there that are taking four to five trades a day. They're taking 60 to 70 trades a month just to make 5%. While I know other traders, including myself, that are taking 15 trades and getting the same return. So what type of trader do you want to be? I personally don't want to be <laughs> panicking, taking five trades a day. I'd rather sit back enjoy my coffee or my tea or a beer and make the next best trade for the day instead of worrying about five average trades. I mean, that's just me. But I think most people tend to agree with me, to be honest. And I'm not even going to go into that. Anyways, let's move on. All right. Mr. Leopas, why am I always impatient to wait for confirmation? Now I've lost $1,000. I don't know. Why are you impatient? That, that, that really requires me to ask you a follow-up question. And this is only a one-way conversation. Why are you impatient? Well, let's, let's go to ChatGBT and I can work off of ChatGBT question because I want to see what they have to say about this. Okay, so impatience is a common problem among day traders. Here are potential reasons. Overly high expectations, okay. Fear of fisting other men online. There it is again, fear of missing out. Lack of discipline, okay. Yeah, I, I, I would definitely agree it's lack of discipline. That would probably be my first answer. Um, because that's also going to build off of having a, fault, a solid understanding of your trading plan and trading strategy of how it works. How many trades are expected uh, and knowing the proper stats of, of what you're looking for. And if you always want more, you can always add more trading pairs in different time frames, right? That's usually a common problem when people will come to me and they're like, they're because they're impatient. They want more trading setups. Okay. What do I usually tell them? I say, okay, I understand you're looking at seven different markets and you're only looking at daily one hour type of trades, like daily one hour is higher time frame daily, one hour is your entry, and you're only looking at seven markets. Now let's open our eyes up to 20 to 30 different markets, and now on top of that, we could also look at, say, what's four hour, five minutes? What's the one hour, one minute? What's the weekly four hour? We could add instead of just one to two, one time frame sequences, we can now open ourselves up to four or five different time frame sequences, and also add 20 different markets. That's how you're going to get a wide variety. Now, some people will deal with information overload during that point. So it's important to find that balance. Okay. Uh, let's, let's move on to the next one. Samuel, exiting a trade manually if I need. Okay. If needed before it hits. I mean, when it comes to take profits, I'm personally a fan of having a predetermined take profit. Because usually after 50 trades, you can review to see what makes the most sense. If going for 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 or 1.5 to 1 makes more sense for you and what makes more money, right? Because if you if you stop having these rules, and this is going back to the start of the video, having rules to our trading. If you stop having rules and definitions, then you open yourself up to making emotional decisions. So if you have a predetermined trading plan, trading man, trade management, trade setup, top-down analysis, very easily mechanical, then you limit this yourself of making emotional decisions. So Blue, how do I deal with the fear, especially when you trade? How do I deal with fear, especially when your trade are running in profit? I mean, if you're dealing with fear, in my opinion, Either number one, you're risking too much, or number two, you're just gambling and you don't know what you're doing. 
Like you don't have a set plan. If you want to do this, walk away. Take a trade and just walk away from your computer. Like don't even look back at it until the end of the day. And it's like, hey, did it win? Did it lose? I don't know. That way you're forced to not even look at the charts. You know, just make sure you have a stop loss. So how do I deal with fear? Especially, well, number one, make sure you're risking the appropriate amount that you can actually handle. And number two, you probably don't have a proper top-down analysis trading plan of where you personally believe in the system itself to where you have confidence in what's going on. You know what I mean? This is why like a lot of sports teams like the build, they might not have the best players, but they have very good chemistry and they have players that buy into the system. What the strategy is, what the, I don't know, what, what the, they call it the system. They, they buy into the system of what the program is trying to teach them, right? And how the program is properly run. And if everybody buys into the system, you usually have a very successful team, okay? So how do you build confidence in your trading plan? Well, you got to have a trading strategy and you got to back test and you got to see if it's profitable. You back test, you make sure you're taking the same trade setup. So you see how everything is coming back to consistently having the same top down analysis, trading plan, back testing, journaling, reviewing. All right. <laughs> So everything goes into. Okay, Lori, how do you choose your take profits first or just according to multiple at your risk? Some people are fans of multiple take profits while other people are fans of just single take profits. If you open yourself up to multiple take profits, then you open yourself up to making emotional decisions, which is fine. But you can find what works best for you if you take 50 trades, you journal the trades, you review and you could see, hey, Okay, I made 20% over the last 50 trades. Does it make more sense for me to take multiple take profits? Because yeah, I'm getting out at a two to one and all that, but I wanna get out at six to one. Okay, first off, does it make sense to get out at six to one? And second of all, get out half of your position at two to one and then maybe half or say 25% out at six to one. You know what I mean? But you keep doing that, you open yourself up making emotional decisions because if you have two take profits and you get out your first take profit at two to one, you're not really making a two to one on your investment. You're getting out because uh, you're exiting 50% of your trade. So if you risk $100, you know, and you get out $50 at two to one, meaning you make $100, okay. Um, I mean, you, you make $100, but you made only one to one, right? you guaranteed yourself one to one. Then you got to ask yourself, what do you do with your stop loss? How far do you manage your stop loss, right? This is why I'm a fan of mechanical way. And then you can review and journal, journal, then review to see what makes the most sense. Does it make sense to have a trailing stop? Does it make sense to follow pivot points? Does it make sense to not have a stop? I don't know. Everybody's different. How do I get rid of trading, of taking trades that doesn't fit my trading plan? Dude, just get rid of them. <laughs> Have a trading plan, and if they don't look like the five to six trades that you have in your trading plan, don't trade them. Remove them. All right, there you go. Boom, easy. Come on, guys. Start making plays here. All right? Big-time players make big-time plays in big-time games, right? All right, every day is a big-time game in the market, so it's important for us to make these big-time plays. We have a predetermined plan. Obviously, you you got to make it up as you go to some extent. Um, just like if you're in football, you, maybe you have a play, they come out as cover one, you cut the ball, you realize, hey, it's cover three, right? That certain receiver's got to know he's got to shut down his, his route because it's cover three. I don't know. Maybe they have an option play in case it is cover three. You've got to work on the fly. You know, it goes both ways, offense and defense for every sport. Okay, let's continue. Oscar, should I trade with a prop for money or with my own money? That's a great question. I used to be a fan of just trading my, with my own money, but also I don't like to have just a large stack of cash just sitting there in paper. So I'm also a fan of prop firm. So either or is totally fine. If you ha don't have a lot of money, I would totally recommend people going the prop firm route. That way that you can get access to a lot of money instead of sitting there trying to risk five to 10% per trade to build your small account. And that's a problem I see a lot of people watching these small account challenges building 
they're watching somebody that knows how to trade and and so they have a completely different skill set than the person that's learning all right now boris because we're going to also talk about mine so we're moving on boris psychology tips when it comes to executing trades i think we caught i think we talked about that i think everything kind of circles back to trading plan consistently having the same top-down analysis with a step-by-step -step trading plan predetermined entry stops top-down analysis journal your trades review your trades to make a better trading plan and back testing right always it, it everything revolves around those three things like if you're not doing any of them you're never going to make money in this i'm just telling you that straight up you believe me or not that's completely up to you i really don't care now as for things that I personally struggled with, and I talk about them here sometimes. Number one, information overload. This is why I say focus on one person and just learn as much as you can instead of watching seven different YouTubers, two different trading forums. You're being in a forum or a chat room, a free chat room with a bunch of people that are just losing traders. Like, guys, like, it's the stupidest thing. Sure, it's good for people that are absolutely brand new. But this is a solo game, guys. You shouldn't be comparing your, your top-down analysis um, or your trade ideas with other people until you're actually very profitable because then you actually know how to manage that conversation and those emotions. Focus on yourself. Take the 30-day trading plan, that trading, the 30-day trading challenge. That will be in the description below for you, that video that I want everybody to take. And that will break down of what I want to see from everybody. Focus on yourself. Learn from one person. Okay. Number two, obviously don't believe everything on the internet. You shouldn't believe everything from me. You know, ain't nothing real on the internet. That's a saying out there from a guy that, uh, some guy had a blog. And he was traveling the world, I think, in like the 90s or early 2000s, right? It was when the internet first came off and the blogging started popping off. And the guy was traveling the world sharing his journey, and it was completely false. Never traveled outside of the country. And then after a year or two years, he came out and told people that it was complete fiction, right? And he had all these amazing stories, and people are commenting, and the one comment popped off, ain't nothing real on the internet. Uh, yeah, so focus on yourself. That is a big thing. Learn from one person. That's why I say one community, one mentor. Uh, one training strategy, one trick pony. That's really important uh, for your free training, moneyballtrading.com. That's always in the description below for you guys to check out. And yeah, I think we answered a lot here. If you guys have any follow-up questions, please let me know in the comments below. And I have no problem helping you guys out with that problem that you might have. But like I said, it's probably going to go into those one of those three categories. I'm going to talk to you guys as if you're men. We're men here. 99% of my viewers are men. I think it's 98. Hey, we've got to make plays. we got to leave our emotions at the side. we got to use our brain for some critical thinking here. All right. I would really appreciate if you guys like this video. Help me grow the channel. There is also a second video that I made on trading psychology. That's also going to be in the link below. But that's going to be talking about social media, understanding reward for risk, thinking in pips and not percentage. But also what's really good is thinking like a casino, having a trading plan, understanding win, uh, winning positions and losing positions like drawdowns and stuff like that, how to manage that. And that that's actually a very good video uh, two years ago. That's also going to be linked down below. If you guys have any questions, let me know. And I appreciate if you guys subscribe. See you guys later. Cheers. Goodbye.